and I'm so grateful. I'm so honored to be here today. Thank you, Apostle Tim and Carol, for inviting me to come. Um, it's such an honor. Thank you to your staff for your kindness and your hospitality hospitality to us. It's been amazing. And thank you. I join my voice with Apostle Tim and say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for hearing God and responding to him in this time. Amen. What an incredible move of God we are in right now. I mean it. I'm just going to let that sit there just a moment. What an incredible Move Not incredible like we refuse to believe it, but amazing move of God that is unfolding right before our eyes. Amen. It's, it is incredible. And I think that what we are witnessing right now is that Jesus has a body in the earth. And that body is awake and active We've been here. Come on, we've been here. We've been hearing God. We've been praying. We've been making our declarations. But it was like we were just waiting on the timing of God. We were waiting from in, for instruction from the Lord. And when we crossed that threshold of that timeline and we started getting strategy from the Lord, I mean, it was like fire that lit in the people of God and the wind of God blew and we are now in a full-blown move of God that's happening in our nation and in our world. Come on, can we give God praise for the body of Christ? Come on. Hallelujah. I was thinking about that just yesterday and I remembered that God gave me a dream a few years ago. And in this dream, he actually showed me that this was how awakening revival was going to happen. And I won't tell you the whole dream, but just a portion of the dream. I was at John Kilpatrick's church and he had invited me to come up onto the stage and minister. And I remember in the dream, I was so nervous because I thought I didn't have anything to say. So I stepped up on the stage and he hand, handed me the microphone in this dream. And all of a sudden I felt the presence of Holy Spirit move on me. And out of my mouth came four words very calmly. The wind is blowing. And when I said those words, the power of God fell in that sanctuary, in that dream. And all of a sudden, God began to prophesy through me. And this is what he said. What was will be again, but it will be different this time. This time, it won't be about a million people coming to one place to find me. But this time, there are bundles. He called them bundles, people who are saturated with the oil of my spirit and they will come into places where my fire is present and they will be touched by the fire and immediately they will be ignited with my glory. Then they will carry that fire with them as they go and they will come in contact with other bundles who are saturated with the oil of my spirit and they too will catch the fire and they will carry it and spread it to other bundles. He said, this is what awakening will look like in the days to come. This is how my glory will spread to the nation and to the nations of the world. It's happening. It's happening. Listen, this is not about me. It's not about John Kilpatrick. It's not about Tim and Dutch Sheets. It is about what God is doing in the earth right now. This is the time of the prophesied awakening. It is happening now. And the manifest presence of God is being demonstrated through an awakened people who are not ashamed of the gospel. And they're not compromising. But they 
they are going with the power and the anointing of God. An awakening is happening. Revival is happening right now. And I'm telling you what I feel is this provocation of an unstoppable movement that is coming as hope is being restored and expectation is being revived in the hearts of God's people. Amen. God has spoken through the prophets that a shaking is coming. He said it through Apostle Tim. He's been saying it in dreams. He has been talking to us about a shaking. But we must never forget that God has also spoken through his prophets down through time that another great awakening is also coming. Amen. And I believe this is that time. Those prophecies have entered their prophetic timing. And what is happening now is God is speaking so profoundly and clearly to the ecclesia right now. He is igniting the bundles. <laughs> Come on, and we're carrying the fire. We are carrying it as the wind of God is blowing us forward to command his forward. We are the carriers of the glory of God. You're it. Come on, we're it. We're the carriers. We are those that God has chosen for this time. And we are being reignited with this expectation. And it is like everywhere I go, I see it. It is like glory is erupting everywhere we go. Amen. I was thinking just this morning that I've had so many dreams where God has shown to me geysers bursting forth. And this is the representation of how the move of God will come. But now it's not just a dream. I think now it's our reality. The geysers are bursting forth. What is a geyser? It's powerful. It's undeniable. Come on. And it's unavoidable. When it comes, it comes. And I'm telling you, it is here. The geysers are erupting and the glory is here. I was thinking this week about a portion of a word that God spoke to me last October. And I'm like Apostle Tim. It's like God is saying so much right now and reminding us it's hard to know what to preach when you get up, you know. And so we try to piece it all together as we can. But the Lord was reminding me of this word back in October of last year that he gave to me. And in the word, this is what God said. There is a swell of an underground current that is rising up. It will burst forth and it will form into a wave of justice that will impact this nation. When he spoke that word to me in October, he reminded me of another word he said to me back in February of 2020. And he said this, my power is twirling. It is an unstoppable spin. And it is breaking the surface to relieve the pressure of the swell of my manifested glory. Reformation is pushing forth. The die has been cast and it cannot be stopped. The geyser is ready to be released and what has been concealed will now be revealed. Watch it gush forth and release the pressure of the swell to reveal the river of my fire and my prevailing glory. Hallelujah. So I'm saying to you again, we are in a remarkable move of God. Amen. And the Lord is talking to the church. He's talking to us in the ecclesia. And the Lord is saying to us that he has not forgotten us. He has not forgotten his promises. Your labor in the Lord has not been in vain. It has been moving us toward this history-making moment. And now we're in it. And in this moment, God is saying the move is happening. The geysers are breaking forth. The wind is blowing. Don't stop now. 
Hallelujah. Listen, God's got great purpose for the church. He's got great purpose for this nation. Amen. God has purpose for this nation. And it's not just political. It's spiritual. That's why he needs the church to be alert. He needs us to be strengthened in our inner man so that we can continue to move with the power of the Holy Ghost in this unfolding moment that we find ourselves in. It's happening so quickly. I mean, look how quickly this thing happened. I mean, we went from one week trying so hard to convince people, yes, God's got a remnant. Yeah, God's got a remnant. And when the time comes, the remnant will move with him. We went from one week doing that to the next week, thousands and thousands of people running around, painting borders, commanding the forward, making declaration for the original intentions of God. We are hearing report after report after report of what God is doing and how people are moving. And listen, as as people share their testimonies. What it is doing is it's, it is igniting in other people the expectation, if she can do it, I can do it. If he can do it, I can do it. I've got a word in my mouth too. I can release my sound too. What is that? The bundles are connecting. You're carrying the fire. I'm carrying the fire. And when we connect, the fire intensifies until the glory of the Lord will cover the earth. Woo. I feel the Pentecostal coming out in me this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't intend to get excited, but I can't help it. Right? We're in the glory. What else can you do? Hallelujah. We're in an accelerated season. And God's been telling us this for a long time. Right? God, remember God was telling us it's going to happen so fast it'll make your head spin. Remember? And so now we're in this time. And things are happening so quickly. I mean, every single day. It's like today's message will become tomorrow's old news. Because it's happening so quickly. And things are unfolding. But Holy Ghost is doing His work. He is guiding us. And He is leading us according to the plans of God. And so we have to listen in this moment. We got to listen intently. And we have to align quickly with what the Holy Ghost is saying. So that we can move effectively in the days ahead. Amen. It's been a blast running around painting borders. It's fun, right? Serving God is not boring. If you're bored, you need to switch and get somewhere else or do something, right? Get under the spout where the glory is coming out. Amen. Because God is moving and you have a part. We all have a part in what God is doing. And so we have to align with him in this moment. And we have to be able and ready to move very quickly with this accelerated moment that we're in. Uh, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, I was actually in eastern Ohio. And I was going to be speaking over there on a Thursday night. And so I had prepared myself. And I knew what I was going to say, I thought. And so I was ready to go to the meeting. And that morning I woke up. And immediately when my eyes opened, a thought, three words just came. And I don't even know how to explain it to you. But it felt like arrows of fire went into my physical being with these three words, ready, set, go. 
just like that. And immediately I thought of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And it wasn't like a familiar scripture from the Bible. And it wasn't even a suggestion. It was like a command that was accompanying these three words that I just heard. So it was ready, set, go, boom, strip off every unnecessary weight and sin which so easily and cleverly entangles you run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before you look away from all that would distract you focus your eyes on Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith yes things are happening so quickly And the Lord has need of us in this moment. He needs us to be those saturated bundles. They're willing to catch and carry the fire. So we have to be rid of anything and everything that would entangle us and cause us to be slow or hesitant in the days ahead in our response to God. We have got to keep our focus on the Lord. We cannot allow distractions in this moment. Hear me this morning. God is saying he needs us to be the people he created us to be. So this is not the time to allow distractions in our lives and other things to take preeminence over the word and the leading of the Lord in this time. We have to hear God effective properly we have to align with him quickly we have to know how to move with him in this moment because the moment is requiring us to be prepared right and to be set that means positioned where the Lord calls you whatever that looks like whenever however God says we must be set and we must be ready to rapidly move with the Lord in the days ahead I was thinking about Uh, when Joshua and the people, when the Lord came to them and put them in acceleration mode. (laughs) You know, and God came to them, and this is what God said to them. I'm giving you a three-day time limit. Three days. To get your stuff together, to get ready, to get set for the go. Right, And so Joshua comes, and in my paraphrase, Joshua was saying to the people, you got to get your stuff together, but take only what is necessary. Don't take what's going to slow you down. Do not take things that's going to cause you to hesitate, because we're coming into a transitional moment with the plan of God, and we have to be ready to move at a moment's notice. When I thought about that, I thought we are in the exact same kind of moment right now. Listen, the prophetic word that has come through Apostle Tim and through the dreams and through Chuck and others that have been speaking, God has given us a three-month timeline, right? June, July, August, and within that three months, God said to us that you must be ready, you must stay ready, you must be active, and by September, the next strategy must be in place. Ready, set, go. You see it? So I was thinking this morning as I was praying over the service, And I thought, Lord, we have literally stepped in to the prophesied new era. We're in it. I mean, we're here. It's not something that's coming anymore. We are in it. We have taken the steps over into it now, and it is happening. But this has not taken God by surprise. And it shouldn't be taking us by surprise. Because if you will think back and take an honest look, you will see that God has been preparing you. God's been talking to us about this moment for a long time. 
and we've gone through that time of preparation, but now there's an urgency that we feel. Something has shifted now, and we've moved over into the urgency of the moment, and what we are feeling right now, and what I feel that Holy Spirit is saying to us is now this is no longer a season for preparation. This is a time for positioning. It is time for us to be positioned in that thing that God has prepared us for. He said it to me this way several years ago. He said, it's time to be what you've been becoming. Amen. And when God spoke that to me, he used Esther to illustrate that. And we all know the story of Esther and how that God prepared her for a very critical time in the plan of God concerning the nation of Israel. And so Esther was the one that had been chosen and she went through a time of preparation. But listen, the preparation was not a perpetual season. Come on, we have to understand that eventually Esther had to be seated in the position that she had been prepared for because the nation was hanging in the balance. God had determined to save the nation, but that salvation was hinged on whether or not Esther would take her place. And God is comparing this moment to that moment. And what he's saying to the church today is that America shall be saved. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how long that will last, but I know it is a promise from God. God has a plan to save this nation and to turn it for his good and for his glory. But the plan of God in this moment for the nation hinges on the ecclesia taking her place and being what God has positioned and prepared us to be. In this moment, there's no room for cowardice right now. Come on, there's no room for fear right now. The Lord has need of us. And we feel that shifting that is taking place, right? Because we have entered a very critical moment in the plan of God. We can feel it. And so the push on the inside of us is a spiritual push. And it is the spirit of God saying, be ready, be set for the go that is about to take place. We got to be ready to move with him quickly, right? And without fear and without reservation. I got a text last night from my mom. And she said to me, Gina, I feel this stirring. I feel that something is happening even right now in this very moment. And I wrote her back and I said, yes, what it feels like is that our spirit man knows something that our eyes are not seeing yet. Right, And so that's the stirring. It's the spirit of God on the inside of us saying, don't quit, don't stop. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Lighten your load. Be ready to move with me, whatever and whenever I tell you to move. Amen. So the Lord has given us instruction. And I was thinking just over this past week, the Lord reminded me of an article that I actually wrote for the Given 15 post. How many watch Given 15? Amen. What a wonderful thing that is, right? A vehicle that God has given for the body of Christ. And so I had written this uh, post for Give Him 15, and it's actually the post that Dutch used the day before he launched the Command the Forward Dream. And so the Lord, we got so caught up in the command the forward, I pretty much forgot about this other post. But the Lord reminded me of it this week to go back and read it and to look at it again. And so as I began to read it and look at it from the perspective of where we are now and what we are moving into, it changed everything because you realize the intentional instruction from the Lord for us 
us for what we are now entering into. So I'm gonna read portions of this to you this morning and I want you to hear it again. Hear it from the perspective of what God's saying to us now and from uh, the perspective of instruction from the Lord to us. I wrote this, life is a journey and there are things that happen on our journey that we don't always understand, right? But if we trust God with faith and obedience, we keep following him, he will order our steps down the path of destiny. Every faith-filled step that we take results in the accumulation of valuable experiences with the Lord, which will benefit us as we move forward into the unfolding future. Experience is the game changer. <laughs> See, as we walk with the Lord, we experience his willingness, his ability to keep us, to provide for us, to heal us, to deliver us. And we emerge from every circumstance, not only with just a stronger confidence in God, but we come out with experiences that build in us an unshakable faith in God. The story of David and Goliath illustrates the difference that experience with God can make. For David, the showdown with Goliath was a defining moment. It was an event on God's timeline. It wasn't just about defeating a giant. It was a moment that God had designed that would forever impact history. And I'm sure that David did not realize the magnitude of the moment he had stepped into. But his past experience with the Lord had prepared him for the transition that was about to take place. As the giant was mocking and ridiculing God and the armies of Israel, a righteous indignation rose up in David. How many have felt that? Yes, it's the stirring of the Lord. And David was not the most qualified. And according to most of them around him, David wasn't even equipped to take on such a fight. But what David did have was courage within him that other people there did not possess. When David ran to face that giant, it was his past experiences with God that gave him this uncommon confidence and boldness to face and defeat what no one else was willing to face and defeat. And I was thinking about this story one day and the Lord said this, there is an event coming on my calendar that only a David with experience will be able to face. So I say to you, gather up your experiences and stand ready. Remind yourself of what I have done for you. Remember my word. Remember my faithfulness and stand firm in your faith in me. The curtain is about to rise to reveal the stage for this defining moment. And my bold ecclesia will be presented to this nation and to the world. My bold ones, my equipped ones who are ready to advance with my original plans and intentions. So rise up, David. There is a cause. Come on, there is a cause. You're not alone. Remember me, gather up your experiences and face the giant with a confident knowing that I am greater in you than anything that could ever be formed to work against you. Let faith arise, secure your footing as you release this confident declaration. The battle is not mine. Come on, we're not responsible for what happens in the battle. The battle is not mine, it belongs to the Lord. But I am anointed to hold 
the sling. Come on. And experience has taught me that God is with me. He will order my aim and the giants will fall. God said to me at the beginning of the year, 2023 will be one for the history books. I believe it. <laughs> We're in a defining moment. And defining moments are critical moments. But they're also deciding moments. Right? When that giant was in that valley and he was mocking God and the armies of Israel, a defining moment was unfolding right then. And someone there that day had to make a decision to step forward and into that moment. Everybody heard the mocking. Saul and his armies who were far more equipped than David to do something about it. They were overcome by fear and intimidation and they decided to stand idle and do nothing. But David's experiences with God had taught him that God is good, God is able, and he is faithful. And the timing of God combined with the experiential knowledge of God that David had provoked him to resist fear and to resist compromise and step into that moment and change history through his courage and his faith. I'm sure that like David, none of us fully grasp the magnitude of the life-changing moment that we have entered into. None of us. For many of us, however, the Lord is saying to you, the process is giving way to the purpose. This is what you're feeling, many of you right now. This is a defining moment. And this moment is requiring us to make a decision. Will we stand idly by, even though we're well equipped, come on, well equipped, by the Holy Spirit to do something courageous in this moment. But will we make the decision to stand by and hold our weapons idle and do nothing? Or will we make the decision to let the light that is on the inside of us shine out through us and let the glory of God become the reality that enables us to change history? Come on. For those of us that will hear the voice of the Lord, here's what he's saying to you this morning. It's time to gather up your experiences. Take only what is necessary. Step into this defining moment with courageous faith, with undaunted expectation to see the power and the glory of the Lord revealed. I believe that events are unfolding right now that are putting a demand on the people of God to step up and be what God has always intended us to be. We've got to stay ready at all times. Those courageous leaps of unrelenting faith in God are now required of us. It is an urgent moment. What a word. What instruction from the Lord, right? We're in that moment and we've got to remember God. I just want to be an encourager to you today and say, remember God. Remember what he's done. Remember what he has said. Listen and pay attention to his instructions. Keep that steadfast faith in him so that you are ready to move at a moment's notice because I believe we will have to move at a moment's notice. Amen. And not just one move here and there. I'm talking about consecutively. We have to stay in line with what Holy Spirit is doing because the Lord is depending on us to be the church that he intends for us to be. And we've got to resolve right now 
that we're not going to be distracted and we're not going to be afraid. This is not the same moment that we were in before June. And we can't look at it through the same lens as we were looking at it back then. Right? All the way back then, just a few weeks ago. Look how things have changed so dramatically. And so we cannot look from the perspective of where we have been. No, we've never been this way before. But I assure you that God knows the end from the beginning. And he will lead us and he will guide us by the power of the Holy Spirit to go and do everything that he has called and anointed us to do in this moment. God is going to save America. <laughs> And he's going to do it through the body that he prepared for Jesus. That's us. Right? That's the ecclesia. It's not just a catchphrase. It's not just something we do on Sunday. This is the reality. We are the body of Christ in the earth. And as he flows out of the head and onto the body, the power of God will give evidence through us of the reality of Jesus. And it will be something so great that it will forever mark history. Amen. So it's a critical time. And we are in a very real move of God. And it will continue. It must continue. Right? We, we can't stop here. It's bigger. It's more far-reaching than what any of us could ever have realized. So we have to know and listen to Holy Spirit. We keep commanding the forward. Come on. We keep anointing the borders. <laughs> Come on, I love what Apostle said. Go do it again. Put another coat on it, right? You can never get too much of a of, of God thing, right? And so we release that. And yes, we're doing that. But we have to understand that's not all there is. We're excited for the movement, but we've got to keep working with God, releasing power, releasing demonstration so that the Spirit of God can work through us and the glory of the Lord can be revealed so that every eye can see it. This must become our reality for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. He spoke it, he will do it. Amen. And he's going to do it through his prepared ecclesia. Amen. I was walking through the house the other day and I heard in my spirit, it was almost audible to my ears. I heard what I knew was the sound of horses running, like hundreds of horses that were running. And instantly in my spirit, I heard this, the hoofbeats, the hoofbeats, provocation of the shaking, it has begun. You will hear of minor shakings that will be a foretelling and a precursor of the greater shaking that is to come. But my ecclesia is riding forward with the commanded forward. And what I declare through them, I will bring it to pass, says the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time. It's time. And it's not by our mind or strength. It's not by our mind or strength. I hear from so many people who say to me, Either I'm older and I can't get out and I can't go and I can't do. Some of them said to me, I think it was like a 92-year-old lady wrote to me a letter and she said, I can't get out and go anoint the borders, but I got somebody to buy me a map and I laid it on my kitchen table and I got me some oil and I'm anointing the map as the Spirit of God is leading me. You think God doesn't pay attention to that? Yes, he does. It's not just about the people behind the platforms and the podiums. It's not about who's got a YouTube channel or a title in front of their name. This is about the body of Christ. We are anointed for this time. 
And it doesn't take a great ministry to get it done. You don't have to stand before the masses. All you got to do is stand before God and say, show me what to do and I'll do it. Show me where to go and I'll go. Tell me what to say and I will say it. And your words and your obedience will be backed by the authority of heaven to accomplish much for the kingdom of God. Amen. One last thing, and then I'm going to close with a word that I feel the Lord wanted me to give to you. Then we can make decrees, whatever you want to do, to end it. Um, Last week, it's been about a week ago, I was getting ready to go to bed. And I was writing in my journal, which I do every night. And I was writing, and all of a sudden, it was like Holy Spirit just took hold of my pen. And I began to write these words. And I looked on the page to see what I had written. And the words were this, the tilting of the horn, H-O-R-N, the tilting of the horn. And immediately in my spirit, I saw a hand holding a ram's horn filled with oil. And I saw the hand tilting the horn and releasing the oil. And I knew that what God was saying is, you're out anointing borders, but don't be afraid of running out of oil because as you go, I will refill you with fresh oil to accomplish my purposes and my plans and I feel that the next few days as we go God is tilting that horn and we're going to ride with him into this moment and God is saying there is increase increase coming to those who will respond to me in this time Increase, increase of strength, increase of health and vision, spiritual perception. Come on, increase of the knowledge of the revelation and the revelation of the authority that we have in God to release decrees, to release prayers. Increase of confidence, boldness. Just like that lady sitting at her kitchen table, anointing a map to some that may be foolishness. But I'm telling you, there is power in her finger when she releases the oil. And as she releases the oil, God is pouring right back into her. Listen, you have an anointing from God to do everything that he tells you to do in this moment. It doesn't have to be grand. It doesn't have to be spectacular. Nobody may not even know that you're doing it, but God sees and God is flowing through you to make an impact on this moment. Amen. Amen. You believe that? I want you to stand with me. This morning, as I was getting ready, I heard the Lord say this to me. It's time to get ready And gather up your experiences because the go is right in front of you. The go is right in front of you. The Lord reminded me of this word and I'm going to release it over you as a declaration this morning. The Lord says urgently, I feel it in my spirit, shake off distraction, shake off disappointment, take your place Set your face like a flint toward me. Do not be moved by what you see happening around you. It is temporary. It won't last always. There is a turning in the works. I have told you ahead of time. And now is the time. Believe my promises, remember my word, and do not doubt it. You are anointed for this time. You are mantled for this moment. You are anointed for this movement. I will order your aim and every giant that I bring you in front of, it will fall. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
So Father, I pray over every person in this room and over every person watching us online, your body, Jesus, your body, Jesus. We lift up your body this morning, Lord Jesus. And I pray for a refreshing wind that will come into their being. But not just a refreshing wind, but a pushing wind that will get behind us and thrust us forward into this moment. I declare over every one of us, God, the reigniting of the flame of the glory fire that we are intended by you to carry. Lord, open us up to be those vessels, those conduits for your glory. Refresh us in our times of prayer, but release us everywhere we go and flow out through us the oil, the oil, the fire of your glory to ignite this nation once again. We know, Lord, that a shaking is coming. We hear you. We believe you. And while I do not know what that looks like, God, I don't know what that entails. But what I do know is you have need of the body of Christ. That when the dust settles, we must still be standing, carrying your glory and carrying your word and your fire with us. Lord Jesus, let your will be done. Whatever your will is, let it be done. Kingdom of God, come into our nation again. Lord, you have promised us another great awakening. And we must have it. We must have it, God. It's not just political circumstance that we are in. God, it is corrupted hearts. It is hearts that have turned away from you. God, it is a nation that has forgotten you. But Lord, we know that you're rising up in your people and you are reminding us that you alone are God and beside you there is no other. There is no other God but Jehovah. There is no other king but Jesus. You alone, you alone are God and you will show this nation and the nations of the world again the evidence of the reality of who you are. We declare there will be an awakening of an acknowledgement Acknowledgement of you again in our nation flow like a river out of your people God turn your churches back into revival hubs turn your ministers back into flaming fire release the oil release the fire and set us ablaze again oh God with the reality of your manifested transforming in glory and we give you all of the praise and all of the glory come on say amen 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 hallelujah glory to God praise what an awesome word thank you Lord stir it Stir it. Mm. I hear the Lord say, I am rewriting the story of the downcast, the bruised, the forsaken, the wounded, the captives. Their witness of me shall be my declaration through the ages. I am the Lord mighty to save. I will march where I want to march. I will go where I want to go. And I'll do whatever I want to do. The attempt of the forever loser and his kingdom to resist me shall be futile, says the Lord. I have set my face and I will not relent. I will not stand down. The cup of iniquity is full. 
and I will drain the cesspool. Goat nations and states that have shook their fist at me will now be shaken by ripened calamities. The shaking shall increase until their Pharaoh says, let them go. My remnant will break through. My ecclesia will break through. Do not fear cancel culture, says the Lord, for the authority of my heirs cannot be canceled. Do not fear, do not faint, do not quit. Do not turn back, advance with me and my kingdom. Advance under Holy Spirit anointings. Advance with my angel armies. Enter by faith the new season of breakthrough moving forward in my name. Move forward in my name and cancel hell's culture. Move forward in my name and cancel the assignments of demons. Cancel the working of hireling shepherds. Cancel the thr thrones of iniquities and their works. My church cannot be canceled. Prevail means prevail. Lord, we decree the promises that you've made and the word that you are stirring in this house this day the bold words that this is our moment. The sling is in our hand. You're doing something that is so big, it's hard to get our heads around it. But we thank you that you are a God that does not stand by. You're a God in motion, moving among your people even this day. Thank you for the challenge that you have given to us through your prophet this day. May we hear it and hear it. Lord, I feel that today. Ready, set, go. Hallelujah. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. We listen. We have been listening for your word today. Thank you for talking to us. May it penetrate our heart, become conscious revelation for this moment. And that we would do the assignment of our great King. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your word. And we will be doers of it. We will be doers of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What a great word of the Lord today. Would you tell Regina how glad we were she stopped by to talk with us today? She has written some awesome books there on the resource table back there. Please go buy everything that she has. You'll be blessed. Um, there's books on dreams back there, but other things. And, um, uh, I have read at least a couple of them myself, and I recommend them. Resource yourself for this time. Um, and I know those, that material is going to resource you. I encourage you to go to the table and uh, purchase some things there. Well, I feel like we got our our walking orders or our running orders today. I feel like running through a troop and leaping over a wall. Go fight some something. Evil, evil, amen. Amen. Thank you, Regina. We appreciate you uh, coming by and talking to us and telling us what God says. All right.
We'll go on your assignments this week. Find some target to paint with the anointing of the Lord and declare what God says. Keep commanding the forward. Bless you. Have a great day.